Hey guys, this is our part three video on the Phillips curve. And if you watch part one, part two, and this video, I really believe you will be a master on the Phillips curve. In this video, guys, we are talking about the process of disinflation. Guys, this process of disinflation, I think goes hand in hand with the Phillips curve. It's kind of the right subject for this third video to kind of tie a bow on the Phillips curve to kind of bring home the Phillips curve, okay? This model shows the process of disinflation better than any other model out there. Okay? Okay? And if you don't know what the process of disinflation is, you will by the end of this video. But before we get into the weeds, let's just do a little bit of reviewing. Big thing right off the beat, right off the bat, guys, is what is the Phillips curve doing? It's showing the relationship between the inflation rate, something we care a ton about, and the unemployment rate, another something that we care a ton about in macroeconomics, right? These are kind of two of the biggest things. If I wanted to add one more to the list of the big things we care about in macroeconomics, I'd probably throw in the GDP growth rate or the growth rate of the economy, which is the same thing. And then of course, again, the unemployment rate and the inflation rate. So we're got these things we care a ton about, and it's showing us the relationship both in the short run and the long run between these two things. In the short run, the relationship is inverse. I like to think of it like a seesaw, okay? When one goes up, the other one goes down. So that's right, the inflation rate, when it goes up, generally speaking in the short run, the unemployment rate's gonna go down and vice versa. Think about it this way, guys. When the AD curve shifts along the short run aggregate supply curve, let's say it shifts to the right, the inflation rate tends to go up and the unemployment rate heads down. And if that AD curve shifts to the left along that short run aggregate supply curve, the unemployment rate's gonna go up and the inflation rate's gonna go down. So there's that inverse relationship in the short run, right? As we have that AD curve shift along the short run air supply curve. But in the long run, the relationship between these two things is not there. That's right. There is no relationship between the inflation rate and the unemployment rate in the long run. Now, the next thing that I really need you to understand is that when we draw an SRPC curve, we draw it with our society having some specific inflationary expectations, some inflation rate that they are expecting, okay? We call it the expected inflation rate. And for this particular SRPC that I have drawn, the expected inflation rate is 5%. And here's the important thing, guys. What I'm saying is anywhere we might be on this short run Phillips curve, and guys, we are always on the short run Phillips curve, anywhere we might be for this particular line, this particular short run Phillips curve, our expected inflation rate is 5%. Certainly the actual inflation rate could go down or the actual inflation rate could go up, but the expected inflation rate remains 5% as long as we are on this curve. So as long as society's expected inflation rate is 5%, we're somewhere on this curve, okay? Again, to find out the expected inflation rate for any given short run Phillips curve, you go to the intersection point between the LRPC and the SRPC. So go to that intersection and look at the inflation rate. Oh, that is the expected inflation rate for this particular curve. In fact, I like to write that as a subscript. That's right, 5%, okay? I'm not saying do that on your AP or IB exam, but I like to say, hey, look, for this SRPC, if we're on it, the expected inflation rate is 5%. That's what this curve is representing. Now, in the United States, the targeted inflation rate is 2%, okay? So if this was to happen, our Fed would go through that process of disinflation, okay? The process of bringing a positive inflation rate down, which is a painful process as you're about to see, okay? So what would our Fed do if they had this being the situation in the United States? And by the way, just to make sure we've got it, we're at point A, so things kinda are good from an unemployment standpoint, right? We're at the natural rate of unemployment, i.e. we're at full employment. On an ASAD model, we're on our LRAS because we're at full employment output, but we have a situation, the expected inflation rate is just higher than the Fed is comfortable with and they wanna bring it down to our target. So what is the Fed gonna do? The Fed is gonna raise the IORB. I've got an ample reserve framework in my mind, okay? So they're gonna raise that interest on reserve balances, which is gonna raise the FFR, our policy rate, the federal funds rate, which should raise interest rates generally in the economy, which should decrease interest sensitive spending, which is investment, number one, consumption, and even net exports. It should cause all of those to decrease. 
investment, consumption, and net exports decrease, AD to shift to the left in the ASAD model, right? So AD starts to shift to the left, which means we're gonna move to the right in our Phillips curve model. Because again, the economy is getting worse as we go left to right in our Phillips curve model, but as we go left to right in our ASAD model, it's getting better. And if we go left in our ASAD model, which is what we're doing, the economy is getting worse. And so, hey, we need to go to the right in our Phillips curve model. So. AD shifts again to the left. We're going to move along that SRPC, okay? So here we go. We're going to move along it. And that means the Fed is, yes, purposefully pushing us into a recession, okay? This is the process of disinflation. That's right. The Fed is purposely weakening the economy, making the economy worse, because what they need to do is bring down our inflationary expectations. And the way you do that is at first bringing down the actual inflation rate. So let me draw this over to here, okay? And we're gonna put a 2%, we're gonna say, that is our 2% inflation rate. And so we're at B. So what this means is while we're at B, the expected inflation rate remains 5%. Okay, because anywhere on this curve, the expected inflation rate is 5%. But the actual inflation rate is 2%. So they're going to bring that actual inflation rate down. And then even to, add it, to even make it a little bit worse, they're going to basically keep us there. That's right. They're going to keep us there until what we are experiencing and we're experiencing our actual inflation rate right until what we are experiencing becomes what we expect right so they're going to keep us there until what we are experiencing becomes what we expect until our expected inflation rate becomes the actual inflation rate, the thing we are expecting. And the moment that happens, the moment we go, oh my gosh, this is, I'm starting to expect 2%. We're, 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 we're experiencing 2%. Maybe we're experiencing it for six months, eight months, nine months, a year even. Okay, I'm going to start to expect 2%. That moment our expectations about the inflation rate change, we shift the SRPC. And if our expectations about the inflation rate come down, that's exactly what the SRPC does. It comes down down it shifts downward dot c s r p c and i'm going to put a two percent right there right because you go to that intersection of this srpc and the lrpc head over there okay two percent that is the expected inflation rate again this is the process of disinflation, the process of bringing down our expectations about the inflation rate, right? Bringing down a positive inflation rate. We headed into a recession, right? The Fed did contractionary monetary policy, shifting AD to the left in the ASAD model, causing us to move along that Phillips curve into a recession. You can see we had this positive cyclical unemployment holding us in that recession until they start to see that our expectations are adjusting to what we are experiencing, our actual inflation rate. Once that SRP shifts, okay, and we begin to expect 2%, the Fed has done its job. It's brought us down to their inflationary target, which the Fed's gonna feel better about because they have a mandate for price level stability, and they interpret that mandate currently for price level stability as an inflationary target of 2%. Hope that made sense to you. Watch part one, part two, part three, and I think you own the Phillips curve. <laughs> we'll see you in the next video.